we have Miss Leah Notariani, and I'm excited to bring her to you today to talk all about things, happy hustling, growing your business, really tapping into that alignment within your journey and making sure that you're clear on what does success actually look like for you. We're going to be diving in. Do you want blissful balance in your personal and professional life? Great. What's up, guys? My name is Kerry Jack, and I want to help you happy hustle a life you love, one full of passion, purpose, and positive impact. I'm a lifestyle entrepreneur, a professional model slash actor, a digital marketing specialist, a podcast host, author, a biohacker, an eco warrior, a martial artist, a hippie cowboy, and a humanitarian. My goal is to educate, inspire, and entertain you to live a life of passion, purpose, and positive impact. It is time to happy hustle your dream reality. Yee <laughs> Right, Leah Notariani, welcome to the Happy Hustle Podcast, my friend. I am super excited to rock the mic with you. Oh, so good to hear, be here, Carrie. I appreciate you for having me. Yeah, of course. I um, I gotta say, I'm I'm interested to dive down the rabbit hole into your work because we are very aligned, it seems, in terms of you know, putting the happy in your hustle, will you? I mean, totally. you are a transformational speaker. You're a business mentor. You've helped industry leaders transform their life and business from the inside out. You're also the co-founder and CEO of Legacy and Leverage, where you support industry leaders to master the science of transformation and leverage and scale their expertise through live events, group programs, certifications, and much, much more to ultimately make a massive impact on this world. And I really am excited to get into all that stuff and much more. But before we do, Leah, I always like to ask, what is something interesting about yourself that not too many people know? Oh my gosh, you're throwing me the curveballs, Carrie. I know. Uh, what is something interesting? I actually spend a lot of time um, really reading and developing and having a lot of alone time. I think when people meet me, they think I'm very outgoing and, you know, I run a lot of events and I do a lot of things, but when it comes to my personal life, I'm actually quite quiet and mm. I like to stay at home and I'm a little bit of an introvert and at times, and I think that really throws people off when they meet me. They think that I'm, you know, always doing all of the things and I actually really love the simplicity of life. Mm. I really love going out in nature and just being still and quiet and um, really tapping into more of the simple things in life as bougie as I can be sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I think it's like anti-bougie almost, you know, you're out in right. nature, right? Like totally, totally. Bougie to me would be like going to the mall and like hanging right. out at the, the coach store or something, you know, but yeah. like nature, I gotta say, like that's, that's the remedy for me too. I mean, I was just totally. looking at a moose last night he was just right out in our front yard just him and i just had a moment i had my little son with me and we were just big old bull moose you know just connecting and this morning a bunch of elk in the yard and you know it's just it's like it's so calming to have mm -hmm. nature you know in right. your environment and it really I is. totally resonate with you know getting away from all the noise to ultimately feed your soul and then and then create your best work. Do you have a specific process when you go in and do that alone time? I do. So I think process is super helpful because I, I think if we don't look at the tangible of what actions do I actually take, it kind of leaves people in the ethers not knowing what really the next steps are. So for me, when I think about alone time, I really spend time to reflect on my thoughts. A lot of people mm. do that sometimes in the morning. I like to do it in the evening and really set up my day. So I feel like when I wake up in the morning that I already know in my intention for the day. I know my action steps and I feel really grounded going into the day. And I like to start my mornings with just a physical exercise, whether that's walking, I like to walk my dogs and I get up early, earlier than my three kids because it gives me that space to really be connected. So I know a lot of people listening, um, some people have families, some people have different home dynamics and making sure that you spend real strategic time just for you mm -hmm. before you let the whole world in has been a game changer for me since I started my company. And it's been the one practice that I've consistently kept because I think without that, you have a lot going on. You know, if you're a business owner or aspiring business owner, you're getting things off the ground, or maybe you're in a growth or scale phase. And without that space that you can really just be 
with yourself and physically mm. move your body and just process, I think it can get really internally chaotic. And yeah. for me, that's been the process is how can I internally calm myself down, be clear so I can go into the world with that. And that's always been a game changer for me. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, we're coming off the uh, optimized life mastermind that Ben Greenfield's compound, we were just talking about it. And I was yeah. like, very impressed by him just, you know, holistically as a human, but he has his routines dialed in. Yeah. And I think the routine and process to your point is so necessary. You know, Jocko yeah. Wilnick talks about discipline equals freedom. You know, people think when you have more discipline and more routine, it actually uh, will detract from your freedom. But in, in, um, in the opposite actually takes place where you would free up more time and you know exactly those pockets of freedom mm -hmm. that you have to, to just do you fully. Right. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. awesome to hear. I do want to kind of dive in, you know, to the legacy and leverage company mm -hmm. as a whole and just yeah. kind of tell us about the company and the dynamics and how you guys make money. Yeah. So when we first came together, my husband and I, he was a high-end consultant. So was I, I was working on more of sales and psychology of the CEO where he was really working on content curriculum and really building processes in order to actually scale. And what we realized is a lot of our clients overlapped and therefore we birthed the company legacy and leverage. And what we realized through that process of blending a family, coming together, getting married, co-owning a business together, that it was a lot. And we realized that we couldn't out hustle our growth. You can like work hard, work hard, work hard. But we realized that in order to actually do the work that we love, we needed to learn leverage. We mm. needed to learn that in order to actually scale in a way that is in alignment with our lifestyle, we needed to build pieces and processes and systems that actually create and support leverage in our life. So we're both coaches. He's been coaching for nearly two decades, myself a decade, and you can only work with so many people in the world. However, yeah. your impact can be leveraged through books. It can be leveraged through programs, certifications, courses, um, and then how to actually facilitate a group in a way that allows the participant and the client to actually experience those accelerated results even more so than working with one-on-one. -on -one. So our skill set has been building out those processes. We do that ourselves as well. And then we also love transformation. So we love going out and just you know, supporting people to transform their lives from the inside out through firewalking and different uh, healing events and breakthrough events, couples events. And it's just really powerful to see people's inner dialogue and psychology and mindset change to mm. see what they're actually capable of. But, mm. you know, leaving people with that breakthrough is never the thing for me, because if there's not a tangible thing you can attach it to, it feels very wobbly. You wait, you know, yeah. you can walk out at a, of an event worse than you came in. You're like, wow, I had all these breakthroughs. I see all these things. And now what? And I think for me, I've always come from a really grounded space of you're right. Well, now what? And here's mm. the process to actually break that down. Here's a strategy that you can actually walk those steps out. So when we created Legacy and Leverage, we really thought, you know, this was a huge need in the marketplace. It's something that we've always done. And we work with some really amazing people that are just awesome at what they do, have such big hearts, and just really need the strategy to support them to actually build a business that's in alignment with also the life they want to be living and the impact mm. they want to have. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where, you know, the happy hustle and your guys's, you know, company legacy and leverage totally overlap, really totally. building a company with mm -hmm. the end in mind, like your dream lifestyle yes. at the forefront. I think a lot of people, they go about building a business and then ultimately they just become a cog in the wheel. They're shackled to mm -hmm. their business. They, they, own, they honestly create a job for themselves right. and, um, you know, that's okay initially, but eventually you're going to want to use systems and leverage to get yourself out of the grind so that you can, you know, expand your impact, but not necessarily your work hours. Right. What right. would you say is the biggest mistake you see from entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs who build themselves into their business? 
Oh my gosh. So let me actually break it down from aspiring entrepreneurs to people that are already in their business working yep. it out. So if you're an aspiring entrepreneur, I think it's so important. Um, I always talk about alignment before clarity. The real truth is you can grow and scale any company. You really can. Like if you have the right strategy, if you have the right processes and the right product, like, can you grow a business? A hundred percent you can, but is it the business that you want to grow? Mm. I think alignment in what it is that you want and actually designing your life from a strategic lens. We spend so much time designing our homes and designing our vacation that we don't actually design the life that we want to live. Yeah. And I think, you know, getting into alignment with what it is that you actually love, like hmm. going back to the happy hustle, what makes you happy? What can you actually see yourself doing not only for a year, but for a decade? Like, do you know what actually drives you? Do you know what motivates you? So I think having that alignment and clarity going into it, knowing that you can really grow and scale any business when you have the right mentors, when you're working with people like Carrie, like he can help you do those things. And it's making sure that you're in the right lane. So my invitation, if you're an aspiring entrepreneur is make sure that you're in the right lane, like really mm. ask yourself, what is it that I want? What do I desire? What is the thing that I want to create in the world? Because the it has been done and it can be done again. And you have a unique way in order to, you know, express that and execute that in the world. So I think it's really important alignment before clarity for people mm. that are already in their business that have baked themselves into it. Um, number one, I would invite you to check your mindset. Check the mindset on your level of need for significance in the business. I remember mm. there's been so many clients of mine that they were so attached to the identity of being all the things all the time that they were always needed. And it was really like they had the team members, but even when they hired the team members, they wouldn't let them do their job because they had so much identity and significance in doing all of the things. Mm. And my invitation is there's going to be things that you need to let go of. And parts of that is your old identity of doing all of it all the time and actually mm. stepping into leadership. And that bridge between I do everything versus I'm still doing, but I lead is a totally different skill set mentality and understanding. And there's some really great books out there that can teach you the difference between, you know, leading and leading doesn't mean that you're not doing, but it does mean that you give people the space to grow and you mm. pour into people in a different way that you can actually grow and scale in a, in a different capacity. So I think when you're in it, um, really reevaluating what are you currently attached to that's not working and you can see it and then mm. having the right steps, um, depending on what your situation is, if you're a coach or if you're a consultant or if you're more service based in whatever industry you're in, um, really looking at, you know, the pieces that aren't working and what are you currently attached to? Mm. Yeah. The old micromanager uh, mindset comes to play, oh you know where you're just you you, you grip so tight um but yeah. yeah we had dan a friend of mine martel on the podcast he talks about buying back your time and yeah you know that's one book that definitely can help you in that department do you mentioned you know there's some others what's your go-to leadership book oh my gosh i just love the book the road less stupid by <laughs> keith cunningham i think he's nice. just brilliant he's yeah. just so um when you get into business, and even if you're an aspiring entrepreneur, like it's just one of those things that he shares a lot. He's like, I paid the dumb tax and you don't have to pay it. So yeah. another thing that I would share is like, you don't have to make all the mistakes yourself. You can learn from people that have grown seven, eight, nine figure businesses. You can learn from people that have grown businesses and sold them and acquired them. You can learn from so many people and you don't have to make all those mistakes yourself. So get a mentor, read the books, look at, you know, listen to podcasts on your way to work or on your way to the office or on your way to dropping off your kids or whatever it might be or the gym. And I think it's really important to just feed your mind different thoughts and allow those to come in because when you think differently, you'll do differently. And mm. I think that's a really important piece. Yeah. Yeah. When you think differently, you'll do differently. That, that is really what holds a lot of people back is, you know, yeah. their self-limiting beliefs and, and ultimately mm -hmm. their, uh, their mindset. Um, specifically though, I love the word leverage and yeah. I'm curious for you, if you can think of like a tangible tactic 
that you yeah. implemented in your business that yep. really created leverage? What would you say that is? So we were working with people one-on-one -on -one, and a lot of people that are in the service industry, whether they're coaches and consultants, I think that it's really important to actually start one-on-one -on -one because when mm. you start one-on-one -on -one, strategically, you can see patterns. And when you can see patterns, you can see problems. And if you can see problems, you can predict predict the path that people are going to be walking on. And if you can predict mm. the path, then you can create process. I know that was a mouthful of a lot of peace, but yeah. um, for me, the leverage point was actually creating a program that had that path that I knew what those problems would be. And I strategically placed processes within that path that I could take people through versus ask Leah for everything. She knows all the answers to all your questions. If you get on a call with her, I promise you'll have a breakthrough or you'll have the next strategy. And it puts a lot of weight on the person that's running mm. the business and coaching everyone. And in order to do that leverage, you have to go from person to process. And when you have process, it's no longer me, but I have a process that's mapped out of all the things that this person needs to do in order to find that clarity. And then they come to me and and I can unpack that through process. And I think the biggest piece when it comes to people actually growing, specifically aspiring entrepreneurs in the service-based industry, is that nothing is through process. It's only through people and that information. And I find that that becomes um, really the bottleneck on the business growing past seven figures. Like, can you grow a seven figure business working one-on-one -on -one with clients? You can, you can work a lot and you can, you know, have the right offers and you can kind of make it happen. But multi six, I would say is more realistic to that. But if you really want to go past seven figures, but also have margin and profitability, then you need to have leverage. And that leverage is going to come from group programs, retreats, um, different, opportunities for your clients to invest in that client retention um, and having those things like actually go through a process and it allows you to input different systems into that that can support it versus yeah. every surrounded by the one person and their expertise and they're so great at what they do. Yeah, I, again, totally empathize. I mean, mm -hmm. having a process and really creating pathways for your perfect target avatar to ascend to their dream reality is right. what it's all about. I can just think back, you know, when I was running a biohacking company prior to the happy hustle, you know, we were crushing it selling 25 K 50 K packages like hotcakes. The right. problem was we ran out of time to sell. We just didn't right. have um, any more slots on the calendar. And then mm -hmm. we transitioned into group and it was far more lucrative with less effort inside the happy hustle, pulling back the curtain. That's also what we do. We have the happy hustle club. It's our 25 K a year mastermind program. It's group format. Now I do do one-on-one -on -one touch points with the guys, but largely yeah. the mastermind supports itself. The wisdom of the, the guys, I mean, they are studs. Like they, so it's, it's cool in that sense too. When you build community, Yes. Three things that every program needs to really create transformation, accountability, community, and expert mentorship, right? So if your mm -hmm. offer can encapsulate those three things, then right. you can really, you know, again, leverage your time more efficiently and effectively, but also like have real results. I'm curious for you, you know, the lead gen component of any yeah. business is like, yeah. it's daunting for most people, you know, right. ideally referrals would, would lead the way. Right. Yeah. But ultimately, uh, you know, warm traffic versus cold traffic, you're going to have to transition into cold traffic eventually, if you want to scale, totally. I'm not saying yeah. you have to scale, right? Like mm -hmm. I think people get caught up with scale. They're like, I want more, more, more. And it's, sometimes more is less and you it just is, yeah. you call it the more disease, you know, where you just yeah. get infected by this like disease of constantly craving more. But I'm just yeah. curious, speak to the lead gen component, component. How do you drive traffic into the front end of your business and then ultimately convert them as clients? 
Yeah. So we've done everything. We have done cold traffic and we have had different lead gen and uh, just marketing tools from VSLs and funnels and all of the things. When we looked at those pieces in our business, I think we implemented them a little too soon. Um, Hmm. For us, it just felt like it was a whole leg that we were really testing. And what we really needed to do is create our systems and make sure that our offers are really validated before we're bringing it to cold market and to cold traffic. So for us, uh, we really spent the time building out just organic um, events. We speak at events. So because I'm a speaker, it's what I love to do. So I found that having lead gen and alignment with what I wanted to do is really important. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Apologies for interrupting your programming. But I have to tell you, the best investment you can make in yourself is one in which helps you acquire skills. You've probably heard people talk about, oh, just invest in yourself and you'll be successful. Yes, that's true to a degree, but you have to invest in skills that will ultimately help you achieve your desired results. And I think one of the best skills one can possess, be it an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur is the sales sword, really knowing how to sell, utilizing pressure-free persuasion, which will make you more money and more impact. Now, if you wanna know how to sell more efficiently and effectively, I just launched a sales course called The Proven Roadmap Process to Selling Millions of Dollars and Helping You to Increase Your Conversions Guaranteed. And you can get access to this new sales course that The Happy Hustle is launching at thehappyhustle.com forward slash sales. And if you act fast, you'll get it at the lowest price it'll ever be available because we are launching it and we want to gain amazing testimonials and social proof to further share this knowledge. So if you act fast, you can get it at the lowest price it'll ever be. That's at thehappyhustle.com forward slash sales. Now let's get back to this episode. So when it comes to lead gen, I think it's really important to start with organic so you can actually validate your offer and validate your audience and see who's your fans on the internet versus your actual clients. I think Mm. one of the biggest mistakes that I did at the beginning when I was really just starting out is I thought that building an audience meant that I was actually growing my business and it's two different things. Um, Although you can grow an audience, you can also grow an audience that converts into clients. And in order to do that, you have to have specific calls to action and things that you can actually invite them into. So for us, um, I knew that I really wanted to grow as a speaker. My husband's been speaking for over 20 years. And I said, why don't we run events? So we actually used events as our lead gen because A, I love doing it. And B, if I'm going to do marketing and it's going to be consistent and I'm going to do it long term, it's got to be something that I really want to do. And from an organic standpoint, we've really loved it. We were able to really grow and scale from uh, building community referrals and really, really organic pieces that has worked really well for us with higher margins. Now, when it comes to where we're at now and looking to scale to the next level, we definitely are going to be implementing um, cold traffic, and different webinar funnels and different things that we've also done in the past. I just don't think that we were ready for it. I think we wanted to insert lower ticket things uh, a little bit too early. Some people scale with them really well. I knew for us, there was a gap in our clientele, which is who we work with now versus who we want to expand on serving. And I think it's really important to Look at your business from a strategic space of what's actually working. How can you create attribution to the things that are working? So I knew that anytime I went live and I did a live training or I went live and I was speaking at an event, we always generated revenue and had new clients come in the door. So if you can create healthy attribution, even if it's organic, I think it's going to give you your lane of what's actually converting, whether it's organic or paid. I think it's really important and don't guess test test your marketing organically. It's such a powerful tool. Get your message out into the world. I think people wait for cold traffic to solve all their problems. And the truth of it is the person that you become and how comfortable you are with the refinement of your message comes organically. You get to play with that and execute on that every single day. And people get to know, like, and trust you and build relationship with you and hopefully, you know, end up working with you. And some people will just sit on the sidelines, think you're awesome. And that's cool too. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, right. I mean, the healthy attribution piece, that that's yeah. key. I hope everyone really takes stock in where they are getting leads and doubling down on that specific channel. Right. If it's working, you know, pour more into it, more effort, more energy, more resources. And, you know, for me, I know in similar to you, when we do masterminds or events, yeah, you know, there's this huge ripple effect because then there's this referral nature that comes from events. Now, events are a biatch. I'll be the first one to tell you, like they are a pain uh, <laughs> yeah, to smart. produce, but they are definitely, you know, like if you do them right, there's no container that mm -hmm. can replicate a real solid live event. Um, but nonetheless, that again, that ripple effect from those people and then the referral nature um, I haven't dove into cold traffic, truly. We're just now starting to do yeah. um, like paid traffic. And I'm curious for you, if you have done paid traffic, what was uh, maybe, you know, your key takeaways in terms of how did you get um, positive ROAS, return on ad spend? Yeah, so for us at that time, it was oh my gosh, maybe four or five years ago, we're like, oh, paid traffic is the thing that's going to grow my business. It has to be cold leads. And, you know, listening to a lot of different mentors in my, in my journey, and we were just invested in a few different programs and we followed their processes. I think when it came to cold traffic, what I realized is that not all marketers are the same. And no. it's really important that you have somebody that really knows what they're doing. And going back to the original book of like, you got to pay the dumb taxes. I just didn't know what I didn't know. And what I realized is I needed to learn that system because that system is still implemented organically. When I think mm. about business and the ability to do and put your message out into the world and actually attract clients. Like you're a perfect example. You have an amazing podcast and people get to come on and they get to really know you and see what you're all about. See your philosophies, your values, the strategy that you have, and then you get to do that and put that out into the world. And it's something that you love. It's your happy hustle. And I think when it comes to marketing and I think when it comes to lead gen, you got to find what it is that you want to do consistently regardless, because cold traffic is not going to get give you your, it's not going to build your brand. It will, but there's pieces of that. If you're not consistent on social and people don't know who you are, it's, I think they work hand in hand. So I think a lot of people, when I first started for me, I'll just speak for me as I thought it was just a separate thing versus when you do cold traffic or when I did cold traffic, I realized it was an entire organic ecosystem that I built around it that actually made it profitable. So mm. It, there's never just this one thing that's going to make it work. It's a series of little things put together that actually make it happen. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think to clarify, like cold traffic is a piece to the puzzle, but first you have to be clear on your brand identity, you know, 100%. what problem you solve, who you solve yeah. it for your uniqueness in solving it. You know, some of these key pillars from brand builders group that, I followed their their methodology. Shout out to Rory and AJ uh, Vading because yeah. you know they they really cracked the code on how to get clear in your brand identity, and then when you are ready, transitioning into paid traffic can be extremely profitable and can grow your impact, you know, exponentially. It's just most people think that is where you start and it's not, um, no, it's I more agree. So, yeah. It's, it's more so f further down the line. Um, I know you're talking about, you know, experiencing life fully in and not yeah. waiting till the end. This is a concept that unfortunately there's a lot of people out there sacrificing their soul, Leah, you know, they, totally. are, uh, they are literally like, not happy in the hustle that and right. i'm not saying every day has to be a 10 out of 10 this freaking rocks because that's not realistic like even if you no, are aligned yeah. you're gonna have to do stuff that maybe isn't that awesome however mm -hmm. the amount of people i see out there specifically like i think of you know some of my my high school and college friends that i'm like damn i i 
I feel bad for them. And and it's yeah. not like in a place of, oh, like my life's better than your life at all. It's just, I see their sadness because right. they're, they're, they're chained to this machine and this, um, you know, quote unquote job security that gives them benefits are sometimes golden handcuffs, but they really do not seem fulfilled. And the ones I talk to that I st- still keep in contact with, I know are not fulfilled. So I right. say all that to just set the stage for you to come in and give us maybe your methodology, your mindset when it comes to, you know, building a business, experiencing life, not waiting till the end to, you know, retire and start doing the things you love. Yeah, I think happiness and success are two separate things. And you can be wildly successful and completely unhappy. And you can also be over the moon in so much joy and bliss and not have success. Mm. And I knew for me starting out my journey that both of those were not what I wanted. I knew that I wanted to be successful and happy. I didn't want to just be happy and have no money and have no ability to create, you know, generational wealth for my girls and leave a legacy and actually do something really substantial uh, for myself and what I wanted to create for my kids. And I think that going into business, I think knowing that is really important, actually deciding what those values are for you. When I think about actually creating real happiness and joy and enjoying your hustle is you got to get priorities on what your values are and your non-negotiables. Because if you go into business with no clear set boundaries, standards, or non-negotiables, your business is going to take over your entire life. And there's going to be seasons that it is. And I think it's really important that you have a support system around you. And if you're in a relationship or you have a family or you're just getting started on your own and you have friends or whatever it is around you, that you're clear on A, the season that you're in and when your endpoint is of that season. Because some people Mm. think it's just like hustle and it's like, well, you've been doing that for 10 years, you might want to learn your happy hustle at this point and figure out how to also enjoy life. And I think when you're going through something like that, I think it's really important that you decide what those values are, what those non-negotiables and what those priorities are, because there are going to be seasons that your business is going to take more out of you. But if you have communication and the right support system around you, that season also has an endpoint. It's not summer all year round. There's summer, there's winter, there's fall. And those seasons change. So I think it's really important to take a step back and realize you're not missing out. You're right on time and you get to really be present and enjoy the moment while you grow your impact and your success and your business, but don't do it at the expense of the things that matter the most. Cause that's why you mm. started. Yeah. Amen, girl. Preach it. I mean, yes, I talk about seasons in my book, uh, the happy hustle and yeah, there, there's hustle seasons. Yes, totally. But, but if you are constantly in the grind, that's oh, yeah. unsustainable. And it's a recipe for burnout. Now, similarly, 100%. you know, I do believe best practices are if you are in one of those unfulfilling, you know, situations right now, it's not recommended in my opinion to quit cold Turkey, your job, or pivot in your business. I do think that you should create the side hustle, you know, build mm-hmm. it up in your off hours and then yeah. transition when that, you know, that income is at a point of, you know, at least sustainability, sustainability yeah. right? Or, yeah. or at least where you're not going to be desperate and, and, you know, um, make bad choices, just, right? Yeah. Make the bad choices. You take the wrong clients yeah. for me, you know, that person who's so needy for their side hustle to succeed, it's unattractive. I call it commission breath. You know, you, most totally. of those type of people have it and it's like they need to sail rather than really coming from a place of service and building a relationship and adding value. So I do think yeah. if you're out there listening and maybe you are feeling a little unfulfilled, get clarity on, you know, that alignment. I always think it's important to define what success actually looks like for you. Mm -hmm. You know, like everyone's version is different. So get clarity on that. And then you can reverse engineer the business to get you there. For me, Mm -hmm. 
in a lot of the happy hustlers. It's the three freedoms that I crave and it's creative freedom, financial freedom, and, um, time freedom, you know, having right. those three freedoms, that's, you know, largely what success is all about. And unless you are clearly defining, you know, what it looks like for you, then you're just going to succumb to society's definition. And that's what a lot right. of people do. You know, they climb the corporate ladder and they get to mm -hmm. the place where they got the white picket fence and the kids and yes. thing, And then they're like, this sucks. I need to pivot. You know, I'm not happy. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. I say all that to say, if you're out there, you know, there is a way to put the happy in your hustle. Leah and I are talking about it. We're living it. And, uh, you know, check out her stuff if you want to know more. Where can people go to learn more about what you're up to and uh, maybe follow your journey online? Yeah, they can go to my website at leanoteriani.com and just find me on any social platform. Awesome. Yeah, we'll link that up in the show notes. And, you know, I do want to ask you some of the traditional happy hustle hack questions. So uh, yeah. these are like a tip, a tool, a tactic in a specific vertical, um, but they should be uniquely Leah. So let's talk about health first and foremost, because, you know, without your health, like nothing else matters, right? And we're talking Correct. about being happy and all this stuff. But like, if you are not healthy, like nothing else truly matters. Um, mm -hmm. What is something uniquely Leah that you do that maybe we could deem a happy hustle hack? So when I think about health, I think about health uh, mentally, spiritually, and physically. So health for me is not just a one vertical of you can go to the gym all day long. You can go and you can work out consistently for an hour every day, five days a week, lift the weights, be in your best shape. But if you're not mentally well, and if you're not spiritually well, for me, that's not real wellness and health. So when I think about health, I think about taking care of your body, no matter what, what you feed your body is what your body is going to be. And for me, I've lived a really holistic lifestyle. Um, I spend times uh, several times a year, sometimes doing detoxification, just making sure that my body's on point. I do a lot of biohacking with like red light therapies and different supplements. And I think really fueling if you want to be a Ferrari, then you you need to fuel it like a Ferrari. You're not, you know, you're not your everyday car. And I think if you're going to be a high performer, then you need to treat your body like that and your mm. mind. So making sure that you have space mentally that you can actually process through your journal, through therapy, through coaching, through all of the different methodologies that you can have. And then spiritually for me, I like to spend what I like to call God time, whatever anyone's beliefs are is just having space that I can literally just feel connected to something greater than myself. And mm. within my body, taking time to exercise and move my body, make sure that I'm not stagnant and have fun with it. It doesn't always have to be a hard workout. You can now go for a hike with friends. You can go out in the woods and, you know, enjoy yourself. I think just movement in general is just medicine. Mm. Preach it. So true. And yeah, I mean, I know biohacking is kind of like a, a fad word that uh, sometimes, you know, people overuse, but how I see it is like ancient wisdom, ancient 100%. wisdom mixed with, um, you know, yeah. modern strategies to ultimately totally. optimize your well-being. And again, you know, detoxing, you know, from red light therapy to cold plunges to all the things like you got to treat your body you know, like the temple that it is, like the Ferrari yeah. that it is, right? And put premium gas in there, right? Food as thy medicine. And you mentioned the spiritual um, kind of happy hustle hack. I typically ask about it, but yeah. um, since you somewhat answered it, let's talk about maybe a relationship happy hustle hack, something that you do. I know it's not easy to work with your significant other. I've, right. I've uh, attempted it and uh, it, it was very difficult. We had to decide, do we want to stay in our relationship or <laughs> in our business together? Uh, yes. So we obviously stayed married um, and uh, continued that path. Uh, however, I'm curious, in your you know, experience, do you have something that yeah. you do for your relationship as a happy hustle hack? Oh my gosh, there's so many things. I think for those that are listening that either aspire to, you know, co-create a company with their partner or not. One of the things that we did when we first started is my husband said to me, he said, if there ever becomes a point that the business becomes too much, I choose our relationship first. Mm. 
he vocalized that and foresaw that potential problem happening far beyond I did. Cause I didn't see that. I was like, what do you mean? We work together so well and everything overlaps. And there was moments in that time that, you know, as much community communication and problems arise and then you're you can't decide whether this is a business problem or a relationship problem is this a marriage <laughs> problem is this our family like you can't separate all of those things so one of the things that we've done in our relationship is really create lanes there's a lot of my life that's really integrated but there's you know leah who's a speaker is the same person but different energy that's coming out when I'm speaking on stage that I'm with my kids, although I'm the same person. And I'm the same person across all of the different facets of my relationships. But I think having your understanding of who you are in relationship and having good communication with your partner is just by far the biggest hack that I could tell anyone is having the hard conversations of the things that are sitting between you two that you're not communicating. It's the hard conversations about business, about growth, about upsets, about the things that are not working, the things that are working really well. And I think having a process or a commitment that you guys do that on a consistent basis really supports versus having the volcano erupt and it's everything and all the problems are all there. So I think you empty the bucket a little bit all the time and then it doesn't become this really big thing. And not mm. to say that those big things won't arise, but I think communication is such a powerful tool. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, having lanes clear lanes and, and autonomy in your different yeah. lanes is is oh my so gosh. pivotal that was definitely a lesson that i learned um but yeah over communicating so the resentment doesn't build up you know we yeah. do like sunday bear talks are you know sunday kind of okay which i start doing stop doing keep doing so then we can iterate yes. and evolve accordingly right yes. um however definitely you know far from perfect but i just think having that as a, a staple is is pivotal Let's talk about money. I, I do think, you know, money is a tool. It's a, it's a frequency, right? It's a, it, it makes you more who you truly are, but yeah. um, it's important, right? Like, it's so know, important. In order to have the lifestyle that you dream about, money has to be a part of the equation. Let's hear something that you do to maybe save, invest, or spend wisely, or maybe even to make more money that we could deem a happy hustle hack in this arena. Yeah. So I think it's really important when you get to a certain point, I was a really aggressive investing back into the business to have it grow the business at the beginning. And I, looking back, I always ROI. I really vet, bedded and vetted on myself and I always ROI, but I also knew that, you know, at the beginning, first five years of my journey, I could have been buying all the things that I was doing. You know, some of the things that I do today, I could have went on all, you know, more of the luxury vacations, but I chose to invest it differently. So I think it's really important to enjoy your life, but I also think it's important to prioritize what it is and how you value and where you want to go. Like what mm. you said before, Carrie, is everyone defines success differently. What my level of success was is different than the next person. And I defined that early on. So I knew that I didn't need to go and buy all of these external things because I wanted to build a business that could run like a machine. And in order to do that, I needed to invest in it. And I don't feel like any of those things were a sacrifice because I really built my business in alignment with how I wanted to live. And if I want to do retreats in certain places, then I can, you know, get paid to go to those places. And you can, you can really craft whatever it is that you want. So now I feel like it's really important where I'm at now is like having savings, looking at investments for my kids outside of just investing in the business. And I think that's really important. And I'm at a stage now that I'm really looking for really, you know, powerful insights on investing in real estate and different diversification of those investments beyond my business. But honestly, I think my personal experience growing to seven and multi seven figures, that reinvestment into my business was the best decision that I made. I always mm. had a savings. I always had it that I'm not like, you know, running on fumes. I never liked that energy. Um, and it's just not healthy for me. So I always had 
cushion. And I think it's really healthy to do that. But I also think it's really healthy to invest in the things that you don't know that you don't know, because what you don't know that you don't know can hurt you. And <laughs> learning from people that know what you don't know and really implementing and growing can really be a catalyst in your success and your happiness and what you're creating in the world. Yeah. So well said. I mean, I like the phrase bedded and vetted on myself. I might have to do a podcast on that. Uh, and I'll give you credit. Don't <laughs> yes. worry. But yeah, having, you know, uh, strategies to invest your hard earned income so that yeah. your money makes more money and then finding those gaps and like, Hey, I don't know this. I need to find someone who does. Mm -hmm. um, one of the guys I should actually connect you with one of my, my bros is Garrett Gunderson. And he's, you know, wrote uh, a couple of New York times bestselling books, killing secret cows. One of them the reason he's mm. talking about, I have a call with him right after this, but I, I should connect you with him because he has yeah. helped me with so many of these innovative strategies to mm. not only save on taxes ethically, right. but also grow, yes. you know? So yeah. it's like, yeah, it's so important. Um, this has been phenomenal. I do want to put you through the rapid fire round and then we'll wrap this interview up. So real quick, this is just, you know, random questions and uh you answer honestly first thing that comes to mind are you ready yes okay favorite food go uh stir fry favorite movie top gun favorite book untethered soul oh i actually i've i've uh studied with mickey singer personally and my brother was his <sighs> personal mentee for years he's a stud amazing um, yeah amazing guy uh, yeah really is um What's your spirit animal? Ooh, panther. Hmm. I see it. Best business advice. Surround yourself with a powerful community. Relationships hmm. and community are such a powerful thing in your life and business that can open up doors for you that you didn't even think were possible. Three things you're most grateful for today. Hmm my health, my family, and the work that I do in the world. Love it. And if you had a billboard for the world to see with your last piece of content on there, what does that billboard read, Leah? Ooh. Live life on your terms. Live the life that you've always wanted to live. Love it. You crushed that rapid fire around Leah. And I just want to take a moment to acknowledge you. Thank you so much for sharing Thank your you. love, your light, your wisdom, your leverage and legacy, and uh, just, you know, keeping it real. I just appreciate you and your energy and just looking forward to collaborating and, and uh, supporting one another in the future. Appreciate you, Carrie. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Now, just to remind people again, where's the be best place for everyone to follow you online and to check out your stuff? They can just look me up at Leah Notariani. So Instagram and Facebook, and we're going to be launching a podcast really soon. So I'm excited about that. Ooh, let's go. All right. Yes. And final question I always ask everyone is, what is your def definition of happy hustling? Ooh, happy hustle for me means that I'm doing the work that I really love every day and I'm in alignment with my purpose and my passion and my values and I'm working hard and doing all the right things, but I'm enjoying the process and I really am enjoying my life in a really blessed way. So happy hustle is definitely a powerful philosophy that I've lived by for a long time. Amen. Mic drop. Leah Notariani. Thank you for watching and listening, everyone. We are out. Peace and love, everyone.